Number one, you need meat to get enough protein. Well, you know, in this, in, in this culture, uh, there, there's a bit of a myth that the only real source of protein is meat. And it's nearly impossible to get those indispensable or essential amino acids without the stuff, especially if you're a growing child. Of course, the reality is a little different. And, you know, even bodybuilders, I don't know if you've ever seen this on the internet, there's an internet group called veganbodybuilders.com. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are really buff. And uh, I look at this guy, and not too long, I just look at him. <laughs> but, you know, I look at this body here, and if this guy can build these muscles, on a vegan diet, I think you and I are probably pretty safe as well. And, and this guy was the world bodybuilding champion in his weight class in 2005. And there are all kinds of vegan bodybuilders. And I actually know some of them that don't even use protein powders. They just don't believe in it. So they're not, it, it's not artificially done at all. So it is absolutely possible. But when you think about it, just think about it for a second. Think about some of the very largest animals on this planet, like elephants. Where do they get their protein? They got big muscles. <laughs> They're herbivores. Okay, so of course you can get enough protein uh, from plants. Really, when it comes to protein, there are two key questions. Question number one, I'm just going to get my water here, is the quantity question. Can you actually get enough protein from plants? And question number two, can we get all of the indispensable amino acids? We used to call them essential amino acids we need from plants. So those are the two big questions. So let's, let's briefly look at this. Question number one, can we get enough protein from plants? Uh, the World Health Organization actually recommends that we get 10 to 15% of our calories from protein. The RDA for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight. That's about 50 to 70 grams for, mo for most people. Now, some would argue that vegans may need a little more, and that may be true, maybe 10% more, if their diet is extremely whole foods and they're not eating soy products. Uh, but for those that are, the 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight is generally plenty. And in fact, of course, as the nutrition people in the audience know, this, this guideline is meant to, to exceed 97.5% of the population. So there's a, there's a pretty decent safety margin in there. Uh, the needs are higher also for children and for some athletes. The average vegan gets 11 to 14% of calories from protein. If you look at the protein in animal products, well, meat, fish, and poultry are basically what? They're protein and fat, right? So depending on the amount of fat that's there, uh, if it's low, you're going to get high protein. If it's high, you're going to get a little lower protein. But about 30 to 90% of the calories in, in meat, poultry, and fish are, are from protein. Eggs, about 35%. And 2% milk, about 25%. Of course, milk is one of the animal products that does have carbohydrates. So. Uh, but if we compare that to plant foods, well, these are veggie meats, so they're, they're more concentrated protein foods, but 55 to 85 percent of the calories are from protein. Now, this is the shocker for most people. Most people are totally unaware that non-starchy vegetables are probably about 20 to 40 percent of calories from protein. Some go even higher, but for most, about 20 to 40 percent of calories from protein. And legumes, about 20 to 37 percent of calories from protein, which is a, a bit of a shock to people. The grains, nuts, and seeds range from about 8 to 17 percent. Our root vegetables and fruits are actually the only two categories of foods that pretty consistently fall below that 10 percent. Interesting. I looked at this is actually lean ground beef, 39 percent protein. One patty has 22 grams of protein and about 223 calories. <laughs> Now, I want to compare it to spinach. Spinach also has 39% of calories from protein. But check this out. To get 22 grams of protein from spinach, you need to eat like a horse or a cow. You need to eat about 24 cups of spinach. Okay? So it's a lot of greens. It's possible, but that's a lot of greens. Okay? Now, this is, this is kind of interesting, and it's not something that we look at often, but I think it it, it, it really is something that's worth taking a peek at. And you, you may have heard of this, this term, nutrient density. 
Well, nutrient density is, is just kind of like the value for your calorie. It's how many nutrients do you get per calorie? How many phytochemicals, nutrients, other valuable things do you get per calorie? And, and so we, if we take 100 calories of hamburger and 100 calories of spinach, and we compare the nutrients we get from those 100 calories, it's, it's actually really interesting. The protein is actually higher in the 100 calories of spinach at 13 grams compared to 9 for the, for the hamburger. Of course, the fat is higher in the hamburger, 7 grams versus 1.7 in the spinach. But check out this, fiber, zero for the meat, 10 for the, the spinach. Uh, vitamin A, zero for the hamburger, 2,051 uh, micrograms in the, in the spinach. Vitamin C, zero and 123 micrograms in the spinach. Vitamin E is 0.2 in the hamburger, is 2,111 milligrams in the spinach. Vitamin K, again, oh, I'm sorry, the vitamin E was nine, the vitamin K is 2,111 in, in the spinach. And check out the difference in, in uh, folate, in iron. It, you would, you'd think the iron would even be higher in the hamburger. But remember, we're comparing 100 calories to 100 calories. 0.9 in the burger, 12 in the spinach. Magnesium, much higher. Potassium, much higher. Calcium, much higher. <clears throat> and zinc, about the same from, from both items. You know, there are really only two ways of blowing up with protein in terms of quantity. And number one is by getting insufficient calories. If you don't get enough calories, you may not get enough protein. And it, it, you know, when you think about it, how many people in North America really struggle with getting enough calories? <laughs> it's not really a big thing for us to get enough calories. Usually it's the other way around. You get too many calories. It, it may be for people who, who are in developing countries, uh, for people that chronically under eat, for people with anorexia nervosa or other illnesses where they have anorexia or a lack of appetite, they may not get enough calories and thus they may not get enough protein. And we actually see this sometimes as well in diets that are very low in protein, very high in fat and sugar. And, and we see this in junk food diets. So once in a while you see, especially young people who switch from an omnivorous meat-centered or meat-potato kind of diet to a vegetarian diet, suddenly they just drop the meat and sometimes they drop the milk as well. And so for breakfast, they may grab a granola bar. <coughs> they may order a double order of fries for lunch. And they're not really substituting the foods that they dropped from their menus. And that can cause a problem as well. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the, the fruitarian or very poorly designed raw diets uh, can, can be lacking in protein. And quite often what you see is people start losing their hair and uh, just get, get you know, muscle uh, loss and so forth. So those are issues as well. So now, what about the quality question? Can you actually get the amino acids you need, the indispensable amino acids, or the amino acids that your body cannot make? Do you get those uh, from, can you get those from plants? And the answer is, is absolutely. Actually, there are nine indispensable amino acids, which our bodies uh, don't generally make in uh, any uh, quantity. And we have to get those amino acids from our foods. Animals actually don't make those indispensable amino acids. They're all made by plants. Okay, so it's, you know, and the, and the deal is a lot of people say, well, isn't plant protein somehow inferior? Isn't it lacking in uh, these indispensable amino acids? And in fact, all plant foods contain all nine of the indispensable amino acids. However, in many plants, one or more of those may be there in insufficient quantities. But the reality, of course, is people don't live on a single food. They live on a, a fairly reasonable mix of foods, generally. See, So practical pointers here where protein is concerned, number one, to satisfy protein needs, you want to, on a plant-based diet, you need to eat mostly whole plant foods and not be pouring oil and sugar all over your food. Because okay? you get protein from almost, well, you get protein from all whole plant foods. You need to limit your sugar and your oil, and you need to ensure sufficient calories.